Psalm chapter 74. Mischo, which means instruction, of Asaph. And I heard today something quite interesting because Asaph, I've always taken the Asaph of David's uh, head song leader, choir, musician at the temple. And I've always taken Psalm 74 as prophecy, a detailed prophecy, which it may. I've also seen today a writing that Asaph, another Asaph, that actually lived after the destruction of Babylon into Jerusalem. I mean, either or. And I'm not going to limit after reading about that. And it's quite interesting. And after a fact, or it could be before the fact in a prophet. And we have seen detailed prophecies. I mean, a, a, a virgin shall conceive. And when we read Psalm 73 last night, a psalm of Asaph, we looked at it as the Asaph that was in the realm of David, King David. So I'm going to go into this neither nor. A prophet or an actual witness. And it could be both. But well, let's look at the scriptures and see. <clears throat> oh God. <laughs> That's a great start right there. Oh God. A prophet ready to prepare doomsday. A man that's witness or witnessing. Why has past tense? And yet we have seen prophecies written in the present tense that had not happened and we have seen prophecies written that has happened has never happened yet that's a prophecy now if it's a historical event as some of the writings of the bible are okay has past tense but Prophecy can also be written. It's like also God writing himself. God's writing, then he puts himself third person. Why hast thou cast us off forever? And this psalm is going to be about the destruction of the temple. It happened during Babylon. Jesus preached, uh, preached and taught about the destruction of the temple in 70 A.D. Why does thy anger smoke against the sheep, Israel, of thy pastor? Pastor would be Jerusalem. So God is angry. And God was angry with Babylon, captivity, through Jeremiah. God was angry when they rejected Jesus Christ. Remember thy congregation, Jewish, Israelites. Which thou hast purchased of old. Coming out of Egypt. They came out under the blood of the lambs. Put on the doorpost. For the blood of the lambs bought the nation of Israel. And the slain of the firstborn of every child. Firstborn child in Egypt. Israel came out under the blood. The rod of thy inheritance. Who's the inheritance? The Jews. No one else. Which thou hast redeemed. And there's that blood. Purchase and blood. Those two words go together. And there's so much in, the, in this chapter. And I hope we can get it all done. But to redeem. There are some states that. When you get a can or bottle of soda. You pay a deposit, five cents, ten cents, depending on what the value of, of the container. And you can go back to the store with that empty container, empty container and redeem your nickel or your dime. You buy back by giving back. God redeemed the nation, the nation of Israel through the blood. He purchased 
the blood. And evidently when Jesus Christ came and suffered and died, he would purchase all Old Testament saints and New Testament saints under the blood of God, Acts 20:28. 20, Redeemed to buy back this Mount Zion. Okay, that's Jerusalem, where the temple is. So we know one thing: either it's Asaph of a prophecy, or Asaph as a witness. He's standing on Mount Zion, wherein thou hast dwelt, hast dwelt, past tense. And, okay, Prophet Asaph, Asaph, David's doing right, Solomon was doing right, my jury Israel's doing right, up to the Babylonian captivity, God left that temple a long time. Sometimes they came in and fixed it up and got right, and sometimes it was dismantled. Sometimes there was other gods brought in. So reading about... The prophet, I assume the prophet, Asaph, and a bystander of what witness? It could be either or. And it's not going to be a doctrinal, you're going to go to hell and I got to split a church because over Asaph of David or Asaph during Jeremiah's time. It's not nothing to be doctrinal. Lift up thy feet. Oh, you know what that is. That's second advent. Unto perpetual desolation. Even all that the enemy hath done wickedly in the sanctuary. You say, well, Asaph, the king, is, look at what happened all through the book of Judges. And David's not far from the book of Judges because in the time of Judges, David's great, great, great grandmother is the book of Judges. And it's not that long from David to Judges. And as I'm looking at this passage here, I'm looking at, okay, the pro I call him prophet. If he is Asaph of David's time, he's a prophet. Or the bystander of witness. And I'm looking at this just chapter now like, okay, I see why there's confusion. We know the Psalms written by Asaph. Which one? Thy enemies roar in the midst of thy congregations. They set up ensigns or flags for signs. This is this army. This is that army. And even in the military, the old days, when they carried flags and men with troops, I mean, each division had a number or a letter and when you read uh red badge, badge of courage i forget what the main character's name is but you know he, he's got injured and this man picks a christian man picks him up and he's walking and talking and they're looking for his camp and you know they're going by all these camps and say well how's he know that's the one over there because he says i'm regiment whatever letter or number and he look up and say, okay, that's not the flag. That's not, okay, that's your regiment over there by the flag. America is recognized by the stars and stripes. Japan is recognized by, you know, the, the sun rays. Every nation has their particular sign of the flag. Israel also had a banner in numbers. Every, well, the 12 tribes of Israel had their own banners. Now verse 5 and 6. A man was famous according as he lifted up an axe upon the thick tree. If it's Asaph of David, Hiram, with those great cedar trees of Lebanon that were brought to the temple, Possibility under Solomon. If it's Asaph the uh, the witness, okay, I don't know. I don't know if it's Asaph the prophet. But now, okay, right now, 
prophecy for future maybe they break down the card work therein at once was axes and hammers that would be the work that Solomon did for the carving for the, the most holy place the holy place the temple itself the cherubims the palm tree all the carving they were broken down they were put up with axe and hammer they have cast fire into thy sanctuary they burned the temple Babylon came in and burned the temple and Titus they have defiled by casting down the dwelling place of thy name to the ground Babylon and 70 AD still don't know what ASAP yeah it could be either or they said in their hearts the enemy let us destroy them together the Jews they have burnt up all the synagogues uh oh of the God of the, in the land now let me say something here if this is Asaph of David's time that's a that is a sure prophecy because synagogues did not come to be to the Babylonian captivity there were no synagogues until the Jews were in Babylon and if it's Asaph a bystander okay He's in, if he's an Asaph device, he's in Babylon like Ezekiel was in Babylon. And Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Indigo. Synagogues don't show up unto Babylon, and that's what the temple service would be with no temple. But it says synagogues of God, capital G O D in the land. Even though they're in a Gentile land, they still had a meeting place of Jehovah. We see not our signs. Now, is that signs as a banner? What we just read? Signs that Jews require signs? There is no more any prophet. I said each nation, each of the tribes of Israel, 12 of them had their own Pacific sign and flag. But with prophet, it also could be signs. Elijah and Elisha came in with many signs. Jews require a sign. This chapter is like, okay. And now that I found out there could be another ace, I'm like, okay. It's, ooh, wow. But it doesn't leave a big question mark, wow. It's just, wow, information. Neither is there any okay, neither is there among us any that knoweth how long. What's the how long? How long they're going to be in the captivity? Oh God, again. How long shall the adversary reproach the enemy? Shall the enemy, there you go. Blasphemy thy name forever. That's what the Antichrist is going to do. He's going to come in as God, above God, and blaspheme God. And a Babylonian captivity, there was a time that the Babylonians came in, the captain of the guard came in released Jeremiah and treated Jeremiah very well and said listen you know your God's done this to you and he preached to Jeremiah and said listen you can go to Babylon with us or you can stay here and the man in charge will take care of you and in charge, he said why don't you stay here go see this leader and do well and they even gave Jeremiah money because God said I gotta pay you for your service
blaspheme the name of God, who, what would that be? Belshazzar? Who had taken the instruments of the temple and had his own orgy party? Now, I could be stretching it way out than that one. Why withdrawest thou thy hand? Because you sinned. Any other case. You sinned against God. Why is this nation getting coronavirus in all the world? Because you sinned against God. This coronavirus now is showing up in remote areas where it should not show up. It's showing up on Navy ships. It's showing up where it's not supposed to show up. And our government is using it to trash the Constitution. And, and right now, this, there's a new drug out there. Oh, how great this drug is. Not how great God is. Not thanking God. I'm telling you right now, America's done. I don't care what you preach. And we could get coronavirus solved, and we can get rid of coronavirus, we'll never come back. But if we don't give God the credit, and we don't repent to Jesus Christ, there'll be a next one coming up, and it'll be just as worse as coronavirus. And it'll be, if you get that one, and you don't do right, and it'll be a, a third, harsher judgment. Until you repent to God and get right to Jesus Christ, or God says, your cup is full, I'm done. And many Christians forget Babylon was conquered in one night when least expected that they came under the under the gates of the, of the city by lowering the water. No one noticed? Thy right hand pluck it out of thy bosom. You know what he's saying? Take your hand out of your pockets, Lord, and help us. While you're sinning against God? How foolish does that sound? As much as foolish today saying, without God, without Jesus, without the Holy Spirit, without the Bible. God bless America. It ain't going to happen. Sorry, stop preaching against America. I'm just a Jeremiah call to the Americans. You're not going to get things right until you come to God, repent to God, and repent through Jesus Christ. Or God's going to have his hands in his pocket. There are Christians today in the worldwide. And we are all praying for safety and health with this virus. We are praying for a little leeway and, and help from God's judgment. The moment that the rapture happens and all the Christians are called up, dead and alive, your prayers for this world are gone. Go ahead, survive without Christians, true Christians, praying to God. I read today the Catholic police wants to do a worldwide exorcism. They ain't going to do nothing. First of all, God's not working with the Catholics. He works against the Catholics. For God is my, notice that king. That's Jesus. That is definitely prophecy, whether it be Asaph or David or Asaph, I'm witnessing this. That's Jesus. And tell the Jehovah Witnesses, God is my, tell them that. Tell them that. Because that's what it says. You know what I mean? There's no, there's no other thing to say that Jesus is God. Then the fact is that Psalms just said the King, capital C, is God. Plain and simple. God is my King of old, working salvation. Can't see Jesus? In the midst of the earth. That's definitely prophecy. Because Jesus is not king now. He ain't king of the church.
we might have taken this from the destruction of the Jeru uh, of, of the temple and all that under the Antichrist. But even that, Jesus has not come back and brought the king. 1314 is Jesus Christ's first advent. You couldn't see Jesus in the cross. There's Jesus Christ, second advent millennium, verse 12, and new heavens, new earth, new Jerusalem. There he is. Now watch Jesus now. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the head of the dragons in the waters. That's tribulation. I'll show you in a moment. Thou breakest the heads of Leviathan in pieces and gaveth him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Job 41.9 is the Leviathan. Psalms 104.26 is the Leviathan. Let's go to Isaiah 27.1. Isaiah 27.1. Some Bibles and people say it's a hippopotamus. You're a hippo. Crap. Twenty-seven one Isaiah. In that day, a Pacific day, the Lord has sore and great and strong sword. With his strong sword, great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan. There he is, that piercing serpent, even Leviathan the crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that's in the sea. Revelation chapter 12. The scripture was scripture. Study to show thyself approved unto God. If you don't, you're going to be made ashamed. And let's look at verse 7, 12, 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against a dragon. How come you can't believe the dragons in the Bible, but you believe the dragons in games and video games and all that other crap? All these magical, perverted movies have dragons, but the Bible can't have a unicorn. It's them that stole from the Bible, not the Bible stealing from them. Look what he says in verse 9. The great dragon was cast out the old uh -oh, serpent called the devil and Satan. Look at verse 14, same chapter. And to the woman Israel were given two wings of a great eagle. That she may fly in the wilderness. Remember wilderness? And her place where she was nourished a time and times and half a time. Three and a half. From the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. Earth. And the earth opened the mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. Let's go back to Psalms. And we can't get into a lot of detail, but I'm going to give it to you. So let's look at verse 12. Psalm 24, 12. For God is our King, Jesus of old, making salvation in the midst of the where Revelation 12 said. Thou devisest the sea with, with thy strength, what did Revelation 12 said. Thou breakest the head of the dragons in the water. What did Isaiah and Revelation say? Revelation said that that dragon has ten heads. Thou breakest the heads of the Leviathan. What did Isaiah say? What did Revelation say? And gave it him, Revelation 12, to be meat 
to the people inhabiting the wilderness. What did Revelation 12 say about the wilderness? I'm just going to give you right off the bat. I'm not going to get into it. But like man that was given to the nation of Israel in, in the wilderness journeys going to Cana. God's going to feed those Jews in the wilderness. Yet future. Before Jesus Christ comes. During the great tribulation period. He's somehow going to beat the poop out of people like me saying crap. People don't like it. So God is somehow going to beat the poo poo out of the poo poo Chinese dragon. And he's going to feed the nation of Israel something that comes from the devil. It says the heads. Well, what goes on the heads? The mark of the beast. It says, tell me more. That's all I can tell you. Thou did cleave the fountain and a flood. Uh-oh. What, what are we reading? 12? Revelation 12? Thou dries up mighty rivers. Like the Jordan was dried up for Joshua, Elisha, and Elijah. It's going to be dried up again. The day is thine. The night also is thine. God. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun, creation. Thou hast set all the borders of the earth. Thou hast made summer and winter, Genesis 1. Remember this, okay? That the enemy has reproached, O Lord, and that the foolish people have blessed me thy name. God, don't forget that. And the books were open. And every man was judged by their works. Oh, deliver not the soul of thy turtle dove unto the multitude of the wicked. I don't know. The soul of thy turtle dove. Forget not the congregation of thy poor forever. Israel. You know why they're poor? All right, Babylonian captivity, why are they poor? All the food and everything has been destroyed by Babylon taken away. Tribulation period. They don't have the mark. They can't take the mark. It's the name and, and, and image of the beast. Jews, proper Jews who obey the law can't have an image. It's idolatry. They know it. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any image of anything in the earth, on the earth, and and so forth. It would be blasphemy for the Jew to receive the mark. Unless they are worldly Jew. Had respect unto the covenant. That God made with them. For the dark places of the earth. Are full inhabitations of cruelty. The earth is dark at the end of the seven years. What's the tribulation period going to sound like? going to sound like cruelty. Oh let, oh, let not the oppressed return a shame. Let the poor and needy praise thy name. Blessed are they are poor. Blessed are they weep, Jesus said. Arise, O oh God, plead thy own cause. Remember... <laughs> How the foolish man reproaches thee daily. The fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Forget not the voice of thy enemy. The tumult of those that rise up against thee. Increase continually. You know what's going to happen? The Bible says that the end times men are going to be lovers of themselves. going to be pride, boastful. And many of them are going to be church members. The judgments of God are only going to get worse. God gave Judah three different times to get right. He sent Babylon three times. The third time, Babylon said, you're, you're done, you're gone. Finished. You know what America's doing? I don't know what the three times are. I don't know where we're at right now, but this is the first time. I don't know how many times God's going to show us mercy and grace. But God got to a point with Judah, you're done. 
You're finished. God had to save the Jewish people and send someone to Babylon because he made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David. He made no covenant with the Gentiles. And God could be and may and God could in all reality of no covenants to Gentile. He could well, let me ask you a question. Are there any Babylonians today? There's not. God could wipe off every American today or tomorrow or this week, next week, a month or a year or years. He could just totally wipe out all the Americans and he would break no covenant at all because we told God we don't want him. We only want God when we want God. He's not allowed in the schools. He's not allowed in uh, uh, the courthouses. We don't want them on the street. I mean, we give them permission to be on the streets now. But if that constitution goes dead, try to go preach on the street. How about April 9th, 2020, a preacher in Mississippi tried to have his Wednesday night services and the parking lot was full with cops and the cops were block blocking this church and telling his members, if you go in there, we're going to cite you. 2020 where the constitution says we have the right to worship god we have the right of free speech and if coronavirus eats away the constitution and christians get persecuted and christians get killed The Jewish Sanhedrin told James, uh, that told Peter and John, don't you dare preach in that name of Jesus. Peter, Peter and John said, hey, listen, we ought, to, we ought to obey man, but we ought to obey God more. Next great event was they were arrested and they were beaten. And then the next great event after that, Stephen was killed. And slowly by slowly, God said with the Jews, I'm done with you for now. I'm going to put you on a shelf. Jacob's trouble's coming. Then my son will come back for you. There's no such promises for any Gentile nation. God could say for any nation right now, with coronavirus, wherever they stand, I'm done with you. God could tell China, the China right now, I'm finished with China and all the world will see God destroy China completely. I mean, they can only have one baby. And all the world look around, maybe England. I don't know what nation. But God can wipe out a whole Gentile nation and say, hey, that's it, I'm done. What will the other nations do? You don't repent and get right, you'll be next. You don't get right, and when I got rid of that city or that place, maybe God will give you another chance. And if they don't get right, they don't do right. Okay, fine. Blow the trump. Call my people home, because now I'm about at it. I'm going to call my people home. I'm going to put my hands in my pocket. I'll give you who you want. The devil. Take him. Satan, I give you permission. You have now can start the tribulation period. I've called my people home. Go for it. I'm not answering. I got my hands in my pocket. Moses, Elijah, get down there according to scriptures. And get the 144,000 for the Jews. For the Jews. Tribulation period's coming. When? I don't know. But beforehand, the church is going. But I'm not going to say we're going to be absent from nations falling and all that. We, we may be here while Christians, Christians think, oh, America's going to stand forever. 
Well, maybe God will break that rod of pride. You know, I'm just telling you. 